Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. I wanted to take a few minutes and go over probably one of the most exciting features we've put in the application since the version two release, which is the vitals reporting. And if you use the vitals scoring properly, it's gonna really change the way that you do service and really help communicate what problems need fixed to your customer. So I wanna just show you in general how we use it because this is um, sort of like going to the doctor's office. When you walk into the doctor's office, if you think about what they do, you walk in, uh, the first thing the nurse does is maybe have you step on a scale and they get your weight. And then you go in the, in the room and the, they take your blood pressure and they take your temperature. And you know, then your doctor comes in and does a little visual inspection and looks down your throat and looks in your ears and listens to your respiratory. These are all vitals, right? So when you walk in, your doctor doesn't do exploratory surgery and open your chest open and see you know, what your heart looks like and what your lungs look like. They take some time and look and listen and evaluate things so they can you know, understand, make an assessment of your overall health. And if we're like doing this for an insurance company, they'd even like score you. They'd use a mortality table and they'd give you some kind of a risk assessment. And that's what we're trying to do with the vitals mode. So what I've got is I've got a you know, standard condensing unit. And I realize I'm gonna go a little faster than you would go in the field because I have everything sort of sitting here, but I wanna show you how you'd set up to do the vitals testing. I've got a couple things here I just wanted to, to point out. Um, you know, we find a lot of people that are just getting into measure quick, managing a tablet or managing your, your gear is sort of a pain. A couple things that I would really recommend you look at. This is a, a Supco makes a Trade Fox umbrella. It's really great for shielding your iPad and shielding yourself from the sun, especially if you're like in Arizona. So this is something that I always carry. And then uh, Vito's got some really great bags for managing the probes, and that's one of the things we use a lot here. It's got a uh, spot in the back for your iPad, so you can pick it up, pull your iPad out, and get that set up. So we'll go ahead and do that in just a second. And then it's really nice because it's got a, sort of a really good layout for all the probes that you're gonna use with MeasureQuick. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll start to point these probes out here. Typically what I would do first, I'm gonna go in the house, I'm gonna to talk to Mrs. Jones, ask her how things are working, any problems with her system, tell her we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do some vitals testing and see how things sit, and then we'll come back in and uh, tell her what we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the system on, and it's gonna make sure you know things start to cool. And while we're in the house, I'm probably gonna take out a couple of these probes here out of my bag. So I've got a supply and return air probe. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. And the return air probe, if you're in a house that's you know, got a full basement and um, all the duct works inside, you could, you could use a hole in the return air drop. But we always really recommend you test from inlet to outlet with MeasureQuick because it will pick up duct leakage. And you can even have duct leakage in your sill plates uh, if, you're, if you have like uh, floor joists that are panned over and things. So ideally you're gonna go into the return air. And even, even in the shop here, even though the return air you know, is up here about six feet higher, seven feet higher than the, uh, the probe that's gonna go on the condensing unit, we'll see quite a bit of temperature difference. Also on my supplier probe, I keep a small binder clip attached to this. You know, these magnets are great until you go on plastic register and it doesn't go anywhere, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up here. We'll just put it on this side so we're not that plastic shield. This probe, you wanna make sure you insert into the ductwork. Very important that it goes into the duct. And then I'm gonna just use this binder clip to clip it to the register itself so that it holds up in there. Get it situated here. Might have to get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so now I'm inside the supplier register itself. You don't wanna be on the face because as this air comes out, it's gonna entrain on there. Now also I'm inside, I'm gonna put my supply and return air static pressure probes. And so I've got this set up here. I've got return air. I've got the, all these are marked. So you'll see on my probes here. Now up here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I usually take a small piece of tape to cover up my static pressure ports and I fold an edge over so I can you know, take it off and reuse it when I need to. They also make plugs you can use for this to plug the holes, but this seems to work pretty well. I wanna have that arrow pointed up towards the direction of airflow or down towards the direction of airflow. Same thing down here. And this needs to go after your filter. So this is a filter box, so be cognizant of that. And I'll go ahead and pull this one off, stick this in here. Come around the front here just for a minute so they can see this for just a second. When I pull out this filter, you can see that obviously the air flows this way. So where my probe is at is here after the filter. 
So you want to make sure that you know, you're not on this side of the return, otherwise you're not going to see the, pre the static pressure drop of the filter. And I don't want to, you know, I don't really need to check that filter yet until we make our assessment because I want to see how it's running as is when I walked into the door. So now I've got a couple more probes I'm going to put out here. I've got a, that's a spare probe I use for duct leakage, so I don't need that one. This one's marked outdoor air. Go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to stick that on the condensing unit, pulling air through the condenser. I've got my uh, low pressure probe, which I have turned on already. And I've got a, a charging tee on the side. This charging tee has a small Schrader depressor here and a, and a port here so I can add a, uh, add refrigerant if I want to do that. I've also got one here for my high side uh, on there if I want to attach it on, but in this case, I'm just going to leave the low side one attached. Go ahead and attach that on. And that's good to go. And we'll go ahead. We can, go, we can use this if we want to. We may, we may as well. Just in case I need to take refrigerant out of the system so that it's, uh, I've got a T on each side. So that I can just hook up my single hose and take gas out in my recovery tank or add uh, virgin refrigerant in if I need to charge the system up. So I'll go ahead and hook that up. All right, so now I've got those two and I've got two more probes here. I've got a suction line temperature, liquid line temperature. So go ahead and clamp those on. And now we're just gonna wait a second for that to stabilize. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll go down to the tablet and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on screen record here just so we can use this in the video. And we'll wait till that comes up here and okay, we're good. I'm gonna hit the hot key, click on the toolbox, go into the probe manager, and then I'm gonna make sure that my return air static, I'll just go ahead and zero it again, even though they're saying zero and zero because the, the probes do drift over time, especially on the static pressure side. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll attach these back up here so that we've got a static pressure reading. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up my tasks here and start a new project. So I'm gonna hit start testing. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the AC heat pump retro commissioning. Anytime it's your first time out, that's the best workflow to use because it allows us to name our site and name our equipment and do some other things that we can't do in a service workflow. So I'm gonna hit create new site here and it's gonna pop up and you're gonna see our readings coming in and our Premier features are locked. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock them at this point. Unlocking the Premier features is gonna allow us to use the vitals report, stream data, use cloud storage and other things like that. So hit unlock and that's gonna pull five qubits from my account and it'll be opened up for the year. You can see the system's been running long enough now that Measure Quick has determined it's stable. So immediately I get a system score and I get some diagnostics, but those aren't representative of this system because I haven't done some important things yet. So when I go down here, I'm going to mark my job site, and you can see that it says Site 7. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that, and we'll just call this site MCS, Manifold Cloud Services. I'm going to put some customer information in here. Oh, company name. We'll fix that. I'm a big believer in a keypad because I do think it makes it a lot easier. And if you're using a uh, like Service Titan, obviously all this information comes in so you're not doing it in the field, which makes it even better yet. But I want to do something that was realistic of the time frame here. And then um, that's obviously not checking off because we didn't put on there one piece of data, probably. Nope, that all looks good. So we hit that, that looks good, and hit continue. Equipment profile now is the next piece that's sort of important to put in here because we need to know what kind of a system and you don't want to neglect your installed. Um, obviously, if this was a new installation, it would be 2022, but it's not. And let's say, for example, this is a you know, 2016 piece of equipment and it's a ton and a half. That's going to fall into our algorithms that actually calculate age and efficiency losses. In this case, we have a piston and that's going to affect our, um, that's going to affect our diagnostics. You can see right here, it says TXV may be loose. So as soon as I hit continue, that fault's gonna go away because now we know it's not a TXV system and it's gonna rescore our system. So now you can see here, we have a, a score that's running about a D plus. And we have some losses because of our age uh, and initial efficiency. We have 
no temp split losses. We have static pressure losses of 14, approach losses of two, and refrigerant loss charges of eight. So we're gonna go ahead and generate that vitals report. Now at this point, it's a great opportunity to present this to the homeowner because you can see it took very little to get this report generated. We didn't have to make electrical measurements, didn't have to pull panels off the machine. And now I can go into Mrs. Jones and review this and say, Mrs. Jones, the way your system's testing right now is at a 67% D plus. That's why it's not cooling well. And it's gonna probably cost you a lot to run it the way, this way this summer. Your sensible capacity is low, which uh, means your system is gonna have to run a lot longer to satisfy the space. It looks like you may have a charge problem um, and also a, uh, an issue with the total external static pressure. We're gonna go ahead and uh, um, at this point, quote out the repair, quote out what it's gonna take to do, and then uh, you know, explain to Mrs. Jones that when we're done, we should be able to get this between a 90 and 95%. Now what's slick with this is, this allows us to differentiate the sales or the service opportunities from the sales opportunities. At a D plus 67%, this is almost a C. Uh, this is probably a system I'm, I'm gonna fix. But if it scored you know, below 50%, then we might get a sales team involved and uh, because at this point it might be better off uh, just to replace the equipment than it would be to service it. And that's really your call on here. This is giving you a tool to do either. And so as quick as we can let the system stabilize, we have the, the vitals report generated and now we can do a great presentation on the homeowner and help them make the decision that works great for them. So hopefully you've got a little bit of insight in how to use this and how simple it is, how fast it is, and uh, you'll start using this as part of your regular service process. This is Jim with BezzerQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.